everybody, my name is Andrea of MacAdrays.com. Today I am sitting here with Ashley Miller, aka <laughs> host. I guess. I don't AKA even know these stylist. <laughs> AKA, what else do you do? Oh, um, I have a life. Exactly. That many. <laughs> it's a lot, I guess. Yes, you do. Yeah. How are you today? Good. I'm just excited to be here. Thank yeah, you so, so much. Thank you for allowing me to even have you because I know you're super busy doing yes. a lot, basically. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. So let us know how you've been, what you're doing, because you have been on the floor running. <laughs> So let us know exactly, because I'm going to let you explain to the audience what okay. you do. Okay, so I am a wardrobe stylist, and that's like my day-to-day. -day. And then I'm also the founder of a company called Koi3, which stands for Keep On Inspiring to Live by Three, Live, mm -hmm. Align Your Mind, Body, and Spirit. And then I'm also um, co-creator of a podcast called Series of Conversations, really more so like a platform because we do a podcast, but then we do a live event that goes on where we talk about different conversations. So what are the current type of conversations that you um, do talk about? What we've been really dealing with now is a lot of self-help things. Mm. So everything from like self-care to um, like your struggles and misconceptions and how you really deal with the outside world and just really like opening up things that we deal with on a, a regular basis but not necessarily talk about or deal with so oh amazing yeah <laughs> so styling how did you get into that so back when I finished college um, I did my master's and also my bachelor's PR and bachelor's and master's in project management went mm. to University of North Florida in Jacksonville and I thought like I had it all figured out and I was actually going to go to take over my dad's company. He has a construction company and okay. I found that it just wasn't fulfilling me all the way. Wow. Yeah. That's a huge jump from I know. construction to styling. I know. Um, and what I did is I actually was going to therapy. And my therapist was able to help me to like, let's go back down to the basics. Let's just go back to like, what are small things that you just like to do? And for me, it came to terms of like, I loved fashion magazines and I just loved being able like, before the next um, one was out, I was already like ready. And I also loved putting clothes together. Like I was like the type of kid back in the day when you had to get your school show, their school clothes, I'm like, all right, I want these outfits like this person, that person, and that person. And um, so it grew. So when I decided to take on my hobby and really like explore it, that's when I started to just look into what is the styling world. Mm -hmm. um, and when I did that, I started speaking it out, speaking it to my friends and family. I started with them and just helping kind of arrange their wardrobe and styling. And then finally, I was like, I guess I'm going to try this New York life, this crazy New York life and see how it goes. And that's what kind of propelled me into my fashion career now, I guess you can call it. So how did you transition from going to work for your father who works in construction development mm -hmm. and to go into fashion well i mean when you start to realize one thing i will say is people don't realize i think that a lot of our what i feel is awakenings happen after the life of responsibility of what you know you need to do when you're in school it's like okay i need to get to the next grade i need to get to the next grade and you're like you know like okay after eighth grade is ninth after middle school is high school and or after high school is college and when you're done with that you have to start answering for yourself it's true. and you know for me it kind of was just like all right i've done everything that i feel like is whether my parents wanted me to do it or whether i felt like i was accomplishing it mm -hmm. um and now i need to kind of really like just figure out what makes me happy and what makes me feel at peace um and i loved working for my dad but i just something was missing and so mm. i had to start seeking and that's why i'm so an advocate of really seeking what is it that fulfills you within your mind body and spirit because if you don't do that you're not really like living out mm -hmm. here um so that's how my transition happened because i was feeling i went through a time of depression i was feeling lost and not just understanding what i want to do with my life when now you don't have the papers 
and the assignments to basically kind of dictate your progression and success in life, you start to be like, okay, what what do I need to do? Right. Um, so when I really started to go into therapy and seeking um, God, because I'm a Christian, it was able to help me to reveal certain things. So by doing that, going back to like with my therapist, she was like, what's your hobbies? And when I started to realize that I really had an interest in fashion um i started to look at what what does that even mean you know so how did you realize fashion was an interest of yours um because like i keep saying before to have the goal of i'm gonna go into construction development and to go into fashion mm -hmm. is like saying i'm gonna drink water but you drink yeah it's like apples and oranges yeah um it really came with mean i want to say like sometimes you gotta break out of being scared for a while, I wouldn't even tell people. It was like me and my therapist. We was like best friends for a while, and that was it. Like about she was, fashion. Yeah, like she wow. was the only one that I would talk to about it. Why because, were you like ashamed? Of yeah, it was you insecure when you when you think about like especially that realm of thing. They want you to know like the brands and the this and the that. Or are you trendy enough? Are you portraying what fashion is? So I was like a little embarrassed to be like I'm interested in that. Um, when I finally got the courage to be like, okay, this is something I'm interested in. I didn't know if it was going to be a career then. Like my, when I decided to move to New York, I had kind of like this agreement with my dad that I'm just going to try it out for a year and like see how that goes. Um, a year has turned into four years now. So, congratulations. <laughs> yes, survive in New York because y'all know it's a struggle. It's a real struggle out it here. Is, is. Um, but yeah, like when I decided to do it, um, I just kind of went with the curiosity. And it's so important because I was actually listening to a Super Soul Sunday the other day. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can't remember who it was, but her whole message was about curiosity and how that leads you to your passion. And sometimes you have to actually really like look at the things that you may not even know where it's going to lead you. But it could lead you right onto the path that you want. Like I look at my situation just in fashion and I'm going from... You know, people can say they have 20 years, 10 years experience and all of that. And God really put me in a place from here where I'm going from Florida where I had some personal styling clients and things of that nature. But I'm jumping into a whole new career. And within a time frame of probably by my second year being here, a year and a half, I'm already working for a major company, ABC, for a show at the right. time it was called The Chew and working in the, in, in the industry there. Like, that doesn't happen just like that all the time. So how did you make that connection to get into the industry? Because as everybody knows, New York can be a very saturated place yeah. no matter what is it that you want to get into. Yeah. From somebody coming from Florida, did you have people here already? No, I had a couple of family members. Um, but nothing crazy. So I really no like, connections in the industry. No, no connection. Well, okay, let me back up. That's that's actually a little wrong. So when I finished my master's, I went through this realm of discovering what fashion was and what different avenues I could take. And when I realized that styling might be a good one for me, I literally googled school of style like school of stylists like schools for that because i was thinking maybe there's i school could for stylists literally there's a school check it out y'all if you're interested in styling it's called school of style where's it based um they have classes between new york and la they're kind of more la based but by the grace of god when i was taking it they were really heavy in new york mm. um and the incentive for doing this which really propelled me to want to do it is once you finish a certification which mine at the time, I think it's a little bit longer now, but at the time it was probably like a six day course or whatever. They take you through different avenues of it. You start to get these emails and these emails, I'm not playing with you, Andrea. These emails was like, I went back to Florida after doing this certification and it was like, stylist for Lady Gaga needs um, an intern. Um, Beyonce lemonade video, they need an assistant stylist. Like, they were insane. Just for doing this just, program. Just for doing this program. Now you're in their, like, log of connections where wow. they're like, this stylist needs an intern. This stylist needs an so assistant. So this is not, like, something that people know. You have to be serious no, you, to know. Yeah, but this. I don't even say it's serious as much as it is. It's like... No, when I say serious, I mean, like, 
you know how serious inquiry is like they say, yeah you can't be smiley who's like oh i just want to try this out no like you you definitely what i always say is like you have to go after what you want and when i mean go after it i mean like research the shit like literally be like all right this is what i'm interested in yeah. let me see the different avenues for it don't just like jump head on and you don't even you ain't even look at i mean we have so many things available to us between youtube and google like look google at google is your friend it is remember that it is your it friend really, it's like school in itself yeah google YouTube. School. yes mm-hmm. like i when i started to be a, wanted to be a stylist mm-hmm. I googled stylists. I mm. wanted to hear their interviews. Mm. I wanted to hear how they were doing the industry and right. what what it even entailed before I kind of just was like, I'm a stylist, right. you know? Right. Um, so that's what happened. I googled schools that could help me because going through my own personal experiences of going to college and, and you know, doing that, I, I went that round first. It's not for everybody. Sometimes it's really of like, who do you know? Do you know a stylist? Does your friends know a stylist? Maybe you can like go intern for them for a day or like a couple months and get right. the experience. But it's like doing things like that. You have to. You can't just jump in head first and you don't know nothing about it. You know? True. And also, um, just to add to yeah. it, when you are on these sets, make sure you make connections, but don't be overbearing to yeah. anybody. The biggest thing that I would say to like anybody, especially if you're watching this, wanting to be a stylist, you have to be seen but not heard. That was literally probably about the first year and a half, almost two years of me being here. I think the reason why I was um, able to get bigger experiences was because I would go on set and whatever the stylist was telling me to do, I'm doing it. But I'm also like, I'm also always listening. So if I hear her say something like, oh, dang, I need to clip this. I'm already coming with the safety pin or I'm already coming with the clamp. But then I'm also wearing around. Like, even the small things. I know some people don't like doing this. But it's like, if I feel like she hasn't drank any water lately, let me go get her, like, a water bottle. Like, all of these things are for reason. You know what I mean? And you need to really, like, pay attention not only to your stylist, but what's going on on set. Like, it's a, it's, this is an opportunity for you to learn from everything from the cameraman to the producers to the, the photographer, everything. Um, so just, but be seen and not heard. They, they'll see it. They'll see your work. They'll see your ethic. And then, um, you know, for me, it's all about not necessarily networking up, but networking around. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm not going to go to the director and be like, oh, I aspire to be a stylist too. But I might go to the assistant PA who we're on a little bit of the same level and be like, yo, like if you got any side projects, like let me know because we're on the same level. Level. I'm not trying to take that stylist's as um, connections. You know what I mean? She will tear you down. Yeah, right there just yeah. Us. It's not. It's not about that. I'm coming here to learn, and I'm coming here to help that stylist. So I never want a stylist to think that I'm trying to take their their connections. Right. I'm just grateful for the opportunity they're giving me. But for the low, like, I don't want to say lower, but the people that are more on my level, like, we got to connect mm-hmm. because we got to help each other to get to, like, the things we're aspiring to do. Just to elaborate more on the thought that I said earlier, yeah. um, when I say the stylist may think you want to take her client, when she feels like, okay, this person is a little overly ambitious, as you should be, yeah, you become a threat. Yeah. And because of that, they'll put you because they're on a higher level than you put you on the worst light ever yeah and you don't want that no you know and you could always bounce back on that bounce back from that but as Issa Rae is saying I always bring this up you have to network laterally yeah because everybody she's working with right now she has said this in countless interviews yeah. are people that she worked with when she was on YouTube yeah she and has. it's kind of like these are the same people that she's bouncing she's like knocking elbows with now on the Instagram you need to big things now and it's like but you know you respect where you're at yeah and yeah. and it's not even about like the competition Re- representation and your you know who you are is important these industries seem so big but they're very small mm-hmm. um so you just want to make sure that people are not looking at you in a bad light the way that you're moving you know right. so for me i never want a stylist to feel like they can't trust me even even now like if i'm with a stylist because i can toggle back and forth so sometimes i assist people and then sometimes i'm the head stylist and so when you get to those types of levels sometimes it can be nerve wracking for the head stylist because mm-hmm. they know that you are like on a different level where you could potentially like 
could have their client. And it's like, you got to make that respect there from the beginning because you know your role. Like, when I'm here for you, I'm here for you. I'm not looking to seek to get anything that's yours. For anybody, I tell people, especially freelancers that are just always looking for jobs and things like that, like, just believe that you want what's for you. You don't want nothing that's not for you. Um, when it's not organic, that's when shit gets real. So, right. <laughs> And it's crazy. There's a lot of people that are not genuine. Like yeah. we spoke about earlier, some panels you go to, um, and I believe Dana Chanel, um, she mm-hmm. mentioned that as well, how she doesn't go to women power event because it's the same message, mm-hmm. but not only the same message, some of these panels, the people on the panels, they're like, you go to it, it's kind of like you're listening, but you're, you don't feel it because you don't feel the message is as genuine yeah. as it should be. Yeah. And genuine is very important. Yeah. Don't only say that I have a message, you have to make sure you connect people yeah. like you mentioned this yeah way. um i'm just very adamant about anybody that i work with like i'm very upfront and i'm all about a vibe so mm-hmm. i want to work with people who are just as hungry as me or just as genuine or just have like a good aura about them um but when i do have to work with people that i know is a little mm, i do my job I do it good, and then I keep it moving. Everybody doesn't have to be a best friend. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Everybody's not for that, so, you know, it's fine. So, Koi 3. Yeah. How did you segue from that? Because how long have you been doing Koi 3? Okay, so, Koi 3 became a solid idea back in 2015, and it came when I had, like, this time of slow work. For mm-hmm. styling in the summer, you'll find that it's a little bit people are more lax, they're going on vacations, they're doing things like mm-hmm. productions are stopping, so you're not getting called as much. Really, yeah. you think productions are hot in the summertime because this is when it's best you can like do whatever shoot anywhere. I mean, I can only talk from my experiences of now, but for me and for more people around me, summer is like the slow period okay. because like a lot of the shows will gear up for the fall oh, and they're right. kind of like ending like May, June. So like that, that little bit of time, everybody's just like, you know, mm-hmm. New York's a little slower, mm-hmm. but everybody's chilling as they should. Um, so in 2015, I had had a slow period and I was like, what am I going to do? And so it started, Koi 3 actually started as a jewelry brand. Um, I am creating, still creating, just inspirational jewelry that I wanted to help people with. Okay. Um, but then I started to see the need of just wanting to inspire people as a whole. And so that's why Koi 3 is um, named Keep On Inspiring mm-hmm. because it's all about us as a community to keep on inspiring one another. And so back when I did my therapy, back in like 2009, 10, I said to my therapist that I wanna be able to have a platform that helps people, and then I also wanna be in fashion. And I never, I didn't know how I was gonna do it. Like I, now it's like they definitely can go together, but then I couldn't see how they would. And when I started Koi 3, I was like, duh, here we go. Um, so it really was birthed off my own personal experiences. And my own personal experiences was that I was in a rut, didn't know how to get through because as especially creators, there's no guideline. There's no direction of what you're going to do. It's yeah. kind of like, mm-hmm. all right, I know I'm creative and I want to create this stuff, but there is no basis. Everybody's story is different. It's yeah. not necessarily no disregard to like the doctors and lawyers of the world, but it's like they have more of a structure where it's like you got to pass this test, you got to do your residencies, you got to do these things, and this is how you're going to get to where you are. With us, it's kind of just like, all right, uh, I want to be a stylist. How am I going to do it? I mm-hmm. want to have a media company. How am I going to do it? Um, so Koi 3 was created and birthed to help people to have this community where they can inspire one another to go out there and do the things and talk about the real shit. And the real shit is that, especially with our mind, body, and spirit, it's like we need those things to be aligned in order to go out there and have the energy to do the things we want to do. So I'm all for a panel and I'm all for all these events that um, help people to really understand the basis of our culture in the industries but I'm also here to help people to know like 
what what gets me going is like those days when I don't I can't find any clients or you know people are not ringing my phones like that shows maybe getting canceled and I'm on it and what's next and it's like okay I go to my meditation I go to like my prayer I go to like working out or like the the top songs that get me hype mm -hmm. like it's all about going to those different things to really help you and inspire you to keep going that's great yeah <laughs> so who have you worked with so far in the industry because you haven't been yeah. styling for four years now yeah so I know you have some NDAs you have signed yeah so some things you cannot mention yeah so of course yeah but if you don't mind who have you worked with um as in my styling especially in my interning and assisting role I have had some amazing experiences with doing plenty of things for people like uh Madonna I worked with her team wow, nice. and was able to do a couple of her music videos and things so that was probably my biggest like oh my gosh because mm -hmm. um you know as a, I was it like working with her it, she's actually really cool I felt like from you know what I saw in smaller um interactions and then we were able I had to go to her house so it was amazing to really just be in the realm of greatness I felt like for me Anybody that can get themselves to a certain level, I don't look at people as just their personalities. A lot of people will be like, oh, if not talking about her, but just in general, like, oh, that person's hard to work with or that person's mean or whatever. Mm. I really value to see people who have gotten themselves through the clouds and really been able to elevate themselves and with that comes hard work so like say for instance with her i watched how she would go from sound check to like then she has to be with her choir then she has to be with her dancers now she has to try on all of these clothes and it's like a day like we might not have a fitting with her until like 12 o'clock at night because she's run through all of the other stuff she has to do before getting to us. And then she might not even be done. She might have other stuff to do. Wow. So it's like being around people like that and really seeing their work ethics really like inspires me to keep going. Because there's a lot of things we deal with and a lot of things in our mind. But it's like just to see like, wow, these people are doing it is amazing. So, I mean, she's been one of the higher realms, but... I've been lucky to definitely work with so many major companies. Obviously, I've worked with like ABC, Fox, CBS, um, and different shows on there. And then um, I've worked with uh, brands like Lipton and Pepsi and Diet Coke and Target. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had a plethora um, of people. But what I really love, to be honest, is I love that world, but my heart is really with personal styling. People who are stylists, if you if you're trying to get into the styling industry there are different realms so there's like the wardrobe stylist that kind of deals with um you know maybe tv and stuff like that that also can be like a costume designer and then there's also like fashion stylists who deal with like editorials magazines and things of that nature and then there's like personal stylists who deal with people and like events or their day-to-day -day, like they just don't know how to create their style um and I love that. Like, I think that my work comes there and it really shines. I love all aspects of fashion. But for me, when I can help a um, somebody going after a promotion and they just want to try to help get their style together and they feel like it's giving them more confidence, that's like, that's when I get so excited. Because to me, fashion is so much more than the, the high brands and all of those things. It's really about how is it helping people. And for me, I've watched how my work can really help somebody get the confidence they need to go out on their first date or mm -hmm. to go and, you know, go for that promotion or just to like be beautiful at their wedding mm -hmm. and so for me it's like that's the stuff that I want to do when I'm when I'm doing my work <laughs> you said something earlier um about when you got into the industry yeah how you were skeptical because you didn't know nothing about you Ooh. you you was not that knowledgeable yeah about big brands and what are the who and who brands at the moment yeah so coming into the industry is that really important I think it really depends on what sector you go into. For me, like say for instance, if you're in the fashion stylist and you're with editorials and things of that nature, yeah, you kind of got to be up on your game about the brand. As a personal stylist, you and even look wise, you have to yeah, come with. You that know, look. it's so 
funny. When I got into the industry, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. The stylists might not want me to say this, but it's like maybe it's because we were working so much or whatever. But I have been on sets with stylists, and they would wear like the same clothes for three days. I don't know if it's really? like they're so busy or what, but I do think though that us stylists are so now you have the stylists of the world who who are dressed head to toe mm -hmm. i'm a very chill person like i could be like what i'm in today adidas like sweatsuit or and she's adidas. super chill like, like, no, you don't i know like, i have like my chill. socks on it's like whatever we're in your house so it's like, yeah. <laughs> But some people are very, like, to the fashion, and some people are very, you know, behind the scenes. But what I've found is, like, the some of the personalities of stylists are we, we like to be behind the scenes. So we're not with the glitz and the glam because we're really, like, so focused on our client. And one thing people don't know, and I will say it, styling is hard. I tell people all the time, they don't understand the work that goes into it. Like, these racks of clothes that appear on sets, how the hell did they get there? Like, we had to get them there. So that oh, means, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> she did a photo. I don't know if you've seen the photo shoot series that we had in the beginning of the year. But yeah. Ashley was a stylist mm -hmm. on the set. One of the stylists. Because it was you and Anne that worked yeah. together. And the clothes that you pulled from those showrooms that you was like, okay. That you used to ask me to drop off. Yeah. I look like a bag lady on the train. <laughs> like, I did not have a home. I had these racks of clothes. I'm like coming on the train just... It's, it felt like I'm having like five babies yeah, in my head. I'm holding. Yeah. I'm like, and I call. I'm like Ashley. Do you do take? I hope you take an Uber when you do this. Thing. Yeah. And she's like, no. Sometimes I have to do the same thing. Get on the train with it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's work. And I tell people all the time. It's a workout. Hello. Yeah, it's a, it's a workout. When I first got here, I lost mad weight because it was like I was up and down from showrooms to stores and everything, and holding all those bags and bringing them. It's a lot of work. Um, so I tell people all the time, like, it's not for the, it's not for the week because yeah. not only do you have to like be on your emails, requesting stuff and doing all that stuff, all that type of stuff. You're going into the stores, you're carrying clothes, like the clothes got to get to set and they got to get back. Like usually wardrobe between production and wardrobe, we're like the first ones on the set and the last ones to leave because we have to set up and we have to break down. And when you're done, all that stuff has to go back to where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I tell people all the time, like, be ready for the work because it's not, it's not easy at all. But I, you got to love it. Like, if you love what it is, it's like the 10% of the time in terms of, like, you're on set is, like, your 10%, I always say. And it's like, but that makes it overall because it's like being on set and then seeing the fruits of your labor when you see the commercial or you see the billboard or you just see the final product when someone comes out and they're like, this is what I'm going to wear to my event it's like that's amazing you're and they're happy and they're like feeling so great about themselves for me that's like the part of the work that i love so what have been your biggest awe moment to this point would you say oh my god that you work with a client or you did something or you're like I i'm in the right industry this is me um i have a couple but i would say my top two is i have a um client Carla Hall I met her through working at the Chew mm -hmm. and she has really helped me to just love the quirkiness that can come with fashion mm -hmm. um, she's helped me to really want to bring out personality so for her she's not trying to be in the bodycon dress mm -hmm. or the things of that she likes her little you know, her skirts or her quirky glasses. Like, she has, like, 50 billion glasses. And we, like, the glasses are just as important as the as the dress or the top. That is and so it's so fun to, like, be able to, like, oh, let's go with the blue octagon ones. Or let's go with the orange whatever and pull <laughs> that all in. Um, so I love that. But um, I also really just love being able like I said I say it so much because it really fuels my soul is I've had a client and she was going she starting starting her career and she didn't know what to wear she didn't know like I don't know business casual what is that and I think too with millennials and even like as what's next after millennials generation x what's the lower one I, mean, I think generation Gen x maybe I, I find I that they're not really knowing what business attire is. And so it's like, 
able to help her right. to establish something that not only makes her feel good and look good, but feel confident that she's able to go into that boardroom or go into those places and be able to talk. I think that that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think the beauty of what I'm finding now as I'm going through my years in fashion is what is my niche or what do I really love? Because when I first started, I was actually scared because I don't go crazy over like the certain brands or like something that's couture or whatever and I had and then I felt like I was a fraud like I'm like maybe Why? I don't like fashion if I'm not so like hype about the new newest la 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 and I realized that everybody has their niches so for me I love menswear and I mm. think I also it even translates in my own wardrobe like I'm not really the foo-foo girl who's like oh my god I need these heels da 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 I'm very like chill and just like simple in a way um so i find that i actually love menswear so much more i love still working with women and and all of that but what gets me good is like not a couture dress but like a really tailored suit um mm. so th but the thing is i tell people all the time that this is why it's so important to intern this is why it's so important to work in different avenues because I may not have, uh, I didn't know that even like two years ago. Like now it's like the feeling that I see maybe some of my other coworkers feel about a certain dress is what I'm starting to feel about menswear. And now I'm like, okay, I want to open this avenue and start to dress more men and to be in those spaces because that's what I love. Right. Um, but that's with anybody and with any career, curiosity, like we talked about before, you have to go to different avenues in order to find what you love. So what has been your biggest challenge that you have faced so far in this industry? Because you don't only, because I feel like we've, talked about your fashion yeah but your talks you do your conversations your podcast yeah as a boss lady as a boss okay girl yes i guess i'll claim it yes you should you should you definitely you're doing it you should so what has it been? um for me it's my mind is my biggest struggle and it's just because i myself deal with anxiety um so i'm always trying to better that avenue for me because I don't want to get overwhelmed. I know that I'm very capable of doing everything that I'm doing and more. And sometimes your mind can play tricks on you yes, and, you and make you feel like maybe you're not worth it. Maybe you're not going to be able to do this. Girl, are you sure you can, you talking about that's what you want to establish? How? Um, so I really try to work on that just in itself. So it's really not even about the troubles of the industry um, or trying to navigate through that. It's really navigating through myself and making sure that I keep telling myself, whether it's through affirmations, through prayer, through meditation. Um, I work out and a lot of my working out is not even about losing weight. It's about, I found through research that working out helps with anxiety. Um, so I, I try yeah, to, does. yeah, so I try to do that at least three to four times a week just to keep myself going. Um, but all of that's really helped me because when you get your mind right and you know, your mind, body, spirit, you're able to really center and work on the things that you want to work on. So then you're able to create those lists of your to-do list and go down those paths of like, okay, my days consist of literally most of my to-do lists are like three parts. So I look at it between like, Ashley as the stylist, Ashley as the founder of Koi3, Ashley as the co-creator of series of conversations. And so my week can go from like, all right, I need to reach out to these clients. I need to get these clothes for this person. Then like I need to create these posts for Koi3 and series of conversations on Instagram because y'all know Instagram is like everybody has to be that's, on instagram <laughs> that's a whole number conversation I know, we I know. spoke about that we earlier did. too we did Woo. so it's like you know trying to keep up with the social media aspect and then also just trying to keep up with what am i really trying to do with 
these brands right. um because just the tidbit because we had a whole conversation about it like you know social media can make you feel like it's all about social media yeah it and then you can. start to focus on like your brand what does it look like what are people seeing how many followers how many likes and i'm really now trying to get back to the center of why i created this like koi 3 was created off of my own experiences of just feeling lost and feeling like i didn't know what i was doing with my life and when i started to do things like therapy and prayer and things of that nature I was able to get the clarity to understand that I want to go into the fashion industry which then through another struggle of not getting enough work was able to help me birth Koi 3 which is like this inspiring brand where I want to help other people so it's like you got to kind of get yourself in a realm to understand what's going on so then then you can go down your path so so how do you keep work coming? Are you <laughs> are you always working consistently? Because it always seems like you're working yeah. either on fashion or your personal brand, which yeah. is point three. But you're always in fashion. Yeah, you always do something in fashion. You've worked recently. I thought you did a project with you did with the one with Carla. Yeah, and you did one with Com Complex. Yes, as well. I did. So you're a busy <laughs> lady. You know, by so, the grace of God, I feel that when you're walking in purpose. I don't want to say your purpose because I think purpose is always ever changing. What you can find is that your very important avenue right now may change and shift and ebbs and flows. So I could be really on styling right now and then in a year or two I might be changing an avenue. But I feel like when you're walking in purpose, you're able, people, it's like a law of attraction. Um, so yes, I do still reach out to people that I'm connected with because we talked about that lateral connection. I'm always like, hey guys, um, I'm free this month, this week. Let me know if you have any projects. Um, but I've been blessed too that people have been like, hey, I got a project. Do you think you would like to come on? Um, so that's kind of how I've been getting my work, but I'm still doing my part because with anything, y'all have to do your part uh to get to get your jobs and to get your opportunities as well not just career wise like right. if you're doing anything like you got to speak those intentions and speak out what you want you can't keep it a secret you, when, it's very important as well that and you mentioned that a lot yeah because you did it through therapy mm -hmm. and you did it through affirmations and you did it by sticking to your word yeah but i'm trying to get this very part important that you work on yourself on the inside yeah not only the outside the outside everybody sees yeah but on the inside is the part that the fucked up shit happens Yeah, it's in. very true. <laughs> Remember that. It's so true, though. And that, that's really why I created Koi 3, because I just want people to see in a cool, dope way. Because the thing is, people sometimes can say, like, they feel like you have to be all spiritual, or you have to be all zen, or you have to... Nah! Like, sometimes I listen to crunk hip-hop songs that get me in my get me in my realm. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sometimes it's like, maybe then it's a Bible verse. Like, it's all types of ways. Or just being around a collective of people doing dope shit together. And that's very helpful. Yes. The, your surroundings is very helpful. It is. Because I remember there was a point where I was going through something, but the people I had around me were just creatives. Yeah. And because of that, us bouncing off each other, and because I see them moving, I'm like, hold on, what am I doing yeah. in my life? Yeah. And it just makes you want to move. Yeah, too. it's so, the energy. Yeah. And, and that's what I want to create. I want to create events where we're able to really just like have that energy that helps each other. Because life is life. It's not perfect. Don't let nobody tell you that. Like what you're, you're, everything that you're going through is for a reason. I do feel, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it, there is no answers. I, I now, as I get older, what's very exciting is that I have really close relationships with my family, and especially like my mom and my dad I talk to all the time. And now it's crazy because you look at them like superheroes, like back in the day. And now, like, my dad will call me about stuff he's going through. Right. And you start to have the realization that, like, we're all on this earth and we all trying to figure it out. And we mm -hmm. don't have the answers, but all we can do is, like, encourage each other and be there and motivate and do our own self-healing and our own self-help to be able to go through it. That's it. Yeah. Like, because remember, the most dangerous person is the person that does not know yourself. Yes. That's the person you gotta be scared of. Tidbits. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Like yeah. you have to 
self-fulfillment is something that people don't understand i i one of my live by three because quay three's like tagline is live by three because not only for me is it live by aligning your mind body and spirit three is a really magical big number that just um represents manifestation mm. so for me it's like if you live by the notion of three you're living to really just know that your alignment is for manifestation and you can do whatever you want when you kind of just be in that realm you know mm -hmm. you'll see the hard things come but just know it's for a reason um but the one the live by three quote that are well the live by three um social media post that I did the other day was happiness is homemade and so three one two three because <laughs> sometimes people are like what I don't get it and it's just like living in that short spurts that just like boom there it is it's the message so mm -hmm. happiness is homemade it's like it's what you make it so it's not about the cars the house the career and all of that that is a part of it but it's really how you're making it. What is you? Don't d depend on a person or one simple thing to make your happiness because it's not going to work. You got to really look into you. It's so funny you said that. Last night, um, I was hanging out with my friend and, and his aunt. And his aunt was just talking about just how people now in social media, she spoke about how people nowadays don't know who they are they look for outside for self-fulfillment they live through their children they live through their job they live through their partner they live through how many people on social media friends life yeah. that they have it's kind of like that's not life yeah. and when all that goes away like this the parents that live through their children when their parents go when their children go away to college or start a family right. move out they don't know what to do right there's people who lose their job when they lose their job, they don't know what to do. Right. When your partner leaves you, right, leaves you for whatever reason. You don't know what to do. You're you don't lost. know what to do. You're lost. So it's very important that you define who you are first. Like I have a friend that have a that has children, mm -hmm. and she always told me. At first, some people are like, "Oh my gosh, you're a bad mom for that." She's like, "I have my children, but I have to make sure I have my own life too." Yeah. And. I, I'm, the older I get, the more I'm understanding the importance of it. Because the more conversations you have with people, and it's so true, you have to define who you are aside from all these other things that life has blessed you yeah. with. Yeah, and sometimes, like in the way of her, if you don't help yourself, you can't help them. Yeah. If you don't get your shit together, how are you going to be able to be there for them? Right. So that's why I tell people all the time, like, it's all about seeking within first. Because before you can be mm -hmm. that great business mogul, that, you know, that amazing daughter, mother, father, whatever the case may be, wife, husband. all of those things, you have to do the work within. Because you won't be able to help anybody else until you do your work. Right. Right. And you still can, because obviously we all have the situations where we are being great in one aspect and another, and we haven't really taken care of ourselves. But to really be to your highest potential, I feel like you have to look within and, and, and kind of worry about yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's definitely true. I feel like this conversation, we can keep going Girl, on and on and we on can about talk it. forever. So, you know I can talk. I can <laughs> but, um... If anybody wants to connect with you as a stylist, okay. anything like that, we're going to connect with you at. Um, So you guys can definitely link me on my uh, website, ashleymichellemiller.com. So my email for that is ashley at ashleymichellemiller.com. Uh, so that's for all the fashion world. And if you ever, even if you have questions, I'm so open. It, this week has been crazy for me I literally had like four or five different people ask like can they just talk and sit with me and like my my time is kind of crazy but I always try to even if it's just a phone call I try to make it happen with people and just talk to them because I it's like keeping these secrets is for what we're all here to help each other so um definitely link me ashley michelle miller.com and then um for koi three we're all about getting together inspiring one another so i'm always looking for people who want to collaborate and do great things together um so please definitely info at koi3.com 
check our website out koi3.com we have merch that i obviously don't even have on today <laughs> you should have been wearing it. i know i should have worn a sweatshirt well, it was an audio interview remember yes yes yes, yes we yeah. originally were gonna have an audio interview but um definitely go on there and link me because i'm all about collaboration so let's work together and then series of conversations we have our platform as well that's the podcast where me as the koi3 representative and then ty Kem, who's my co-creator we just talk about all types of things on there so we're all about just what are we commonly dealing with but not necessarily talking to each other about conversation is so important so many things can get accomplished when you just talk Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where a series of conversation was created. So look us up, Instagram, series of conversations. And we're also series of conversations at gmail.com. Well, you just heard it from Ashley herself. <laughs> Definitely connect with her. If you want her as a stylist, if you want to listen to her podcast, if you want to be on the show. Yeah. Or if you just want to just... Just talk, link, just vibe. Definitely. You know? Because me and Ashley met. At a panel event. We did. Randomly. We did. We couldn't find the entrance. <laughs> and I'm like, um, where's the entrance? And she's at, I'm like, I don't know. Like, and we're just walking through and just started talking. Yeah. And there was me sitting down next, next to each other at the panel event. Yeah. I didn't know nobody. She didn't know anybody. Right. And ever since, since then, we've been connected. We've been dope. We've been riding it out. And that's all it was about. Yeah. It really is. So, yeah. loving it. My name is Andrea from MacAdreas.com. I just sat with Ashley. Miller. Yes. Everything that you need from her, you will find it in the description below. Definitely read there and connect with her. Please reach please. out and connect because as she's doing dope things and she want to hear from you and your thoughts and see how to help you bring your style up and if you yes. make you feel nice. Yes. Thank <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I will see you every Tuesday. Look out for the new episodes. Definitely like and share this video and we will talk soon. Bye. Bye.